little background. We've got electrostatic attractions keeping the electrons within the atom. It's the attraction between the oppositely charged electrons and the protons and the nucleus. The larger the charge in a nucleus, the greater the attraction is going to be because the protons are going to be positive and they're acting as a group. So more protons, more attraction. Also, the closer that the electrons are to the nucleus, the greater the attraction is going to be. So electrons in the first and second energy level are going to be much more strongly attracted than electrons in the sixth and seventh energy level, which are further away. A couple of definitions. Valence electrons are electrons that are in the highest energy level. So when you look at your electron configurations or orbital notations, those electrons that have the highest value for n, the highest value for the energy level, are considered the valence electrons. The electrons that are in lower energy levels we call core electrons. As an example, let's look at a couple of elements. We have chlorine, and if we look at chlorine and look at its configuration, we see that the highest energy represented is the third energy level. And in the third energy level, we have two electrons in the s and five electrons in the p to give us a total of seven valence electrons. In iron, this time around, we have the highest energy level being represented by the fourth energy level. Even though it's in the middle of the d block, it, we still have the highest energy level being represented as the fourth, and it only has two valence electrons because the two electrons in the fourth energy level. For tin, in, our, in the middle of our electron configuration, we have the d sublevel. Tin is on the fifth period, therefore the highest energy level is going to be the fifth energy level, and we have two electrons in the s and two electrons in the p for a total of four valence electrons. 